Well, that's unsettling. As Turkey grapples with a financial crisis, fears mount that its economic consequences will ripple through global markets. The Turkish stock market continued to fall on Monday, with its currency trading as low as 6.97 to the dollar. The value of the lira has already dropped 46% since January. Turkey had borrowed freely in recent years due to cheap rates in the U.S. and Europe, but debts are becoming unmanageable with the U.S. Federal Reserve's raised interest rates. The lira's fall has been made worse by President Erdogan's insistence that the central bank keep interest rates low. Recent disputes with the U.S. has also prompted Trump to double tariffs on Turkish steel. The Washington Post reports Turkish borrowers currently owe more than 82 billion to Spanish banks and 38 billion to French ones. These and other foreign banks are set to suffer big losses should the debt default. The Erdogan administration has blamed foreign threats for the country's financial turmoil and has urged citizens to sell dollars and gold to support the lira. An action plan to stem losses is supposedly in the works. In the meantime, the central bank is taking steps to make short-term credit more accessible to banks. Money makes the world go round. Would you return 40,000 bucks you found on a ratty old sofa? Next time you need some furniture, you might want to consider heading to a thrift shop. Three less than wealthy college students stopped by a New York Salvation Army outlet and purchased a $20 used sofa, not because it was a nice sofa, but because it was the only one that would fit in their tiny living room. Several months later, one of the young people noticed lumps in the sofa, and after digging into it, they discovered an envelope with $4,000 in it. More digging produced more envelopes, and by the time the sofa had released all of its loot, the three young people were holding 40,000 bucks in cash. But as they were fantasizing about how to spend the dough, a little piece of paper was found that would change everything. It was a bank receipt with a name on it. The young people say the minute they saw the name, they knew they had to do the right thing and return the cash. The students tracked down the owner who turned out to be a 91-year-old widow who doesn't trust banks. She'd been in the hospital having hip surgery when one of her relatives decided to get rid of the sofa. The elderly woman praised the students for their honesty and gave them a $1,000 reward. Would you have returned the cash? Tell us in the comments. Black civil rights activist to be new face of Canada's $10 bill. Canadian currency is about to get a long overdue facelift. Before Rosa Parks in Alabama, it was Viola Desmond who stood up to racial segregation in Canada. In 1946, Desmond was sitting in a whites-only section of a movie theater in Nova Scotia, where she was told she was supposed to be sitting up in the balcony section with the other colored folk. For her bold seating preference, Desmond was arrested and fined, but her fight against the charges was the first for a black woman in Canada. In 2018, her courage at such a critical juncture in Canadian history will be widely recognized, honored as the face of the $10 bill. The current face of the Purple Note, Canada's first Prime Minister Sir John A. Macdonald, will be reassigned to a bill of higher monetary value at that time. As will Sir Wilfrid Laurier, Canada's first French-speaking Prime Minister. He currently remains enshrined on Canada's $5 note, though his replacement has yet to be named. Earlier this year, the United States Treasury Department announced that abolitionist Harriet Tubman was to be the new face of the American $20 bill. But fears over the Trump administration possibly reversing the decision could potentially lead to an early debut for the Tubman design. Multicolored money's way more fun, isn't it? Florida man goes rocky on ATM for giving him too much cash. A Florida man has been charged with criminal mischief after he reportedly assaulted an ATM machine. Michael Joseph Oleksik happened to be visiting the Wells Fargo and Coco when he got into a tussle with the ATM machine on November 29th. According to the police, surveillance footage shows Oleksik having a disagreement with the touchscreen that got physical. Real physical. At one point, Oleksik introduced his fists of fury to the machine, which ended up costing at least $5,000 in damages. Oleksik called the bank a short time after the throwdown and told them the ATM had dispensed too much money. He said he was in a hurry for work and didn't know what to do. Wells Fargo returned the favor by having Alexic arrested and charged. Somebody was making it rain in Dubai for real. Earlier this month, cash literally fell from the sky in UAE's largest city. Those fortunate enough to be out and about were either collecting their windfall or using cell phone cameras to record those who were. Pedestrians paused to snatch up the thousands of 500 UAE dirham notes floating through the air, each worth about 136 US dollars. 
Strong winds carried the cash through the Jumeirah area for several minutes. Some motorists stepped out of their vehicles and raked up notes from the middle of the highway. It's estimated that two to three million UAE dirham were blowing in the wind. And nobody seems to have a clue as to why the equivalent of 500,000 to 800,000 in US dollars were on the loose. Man buys car with 120,000 one yuan bills in China. A Chinese man bought a car that costs 120,000 yuan, which is roughly 19,500 US dollars in cash, using only one yuan bills and coins on Wednesday. The man, surnamed Li from the city of Handan in the northern province of Hebei, is a food wholesaler who had been saving money for a long time. On Wednesday, Mr. Li carried all his cash to buy the car. The car dealer had to call the bank to send accountants to count the bills. They were 103,000 one yuan notes and 16,300 one yuan coins in total. Big ups to this lady. A former waitress is trying to make things right after stealing from a Mexican restaurant she worked at more than 20 years ago. Carlotta Flores, who owns El Charo restaurant in Tucson, Arizona, received a letter last week from a woman who had worked for Flores in the 1990s while attending the University of Arizona. In the letter, the woman who identified herself as a thankful former employee confessed that she was encouraged by a fellow waiter to forget to ring in a few drinks and pocket some cash. The former employee explained she grew up in the church environment and the theft was out of her character, and claimed she was a terrible waitress and was thankful that she was fired before the money she stole could add up to more than a few hundred dollars. Twenty years later, the woman said in the letter that she still carries great remorse and she's very sorry for the theft she committed. With the letter was an attached $1,000, which was a repayment added with 20 years of interest. In an interview with KVOA-TV, Flores said the letter deeply moved her and her employees. She added the letter had restored her faith in humanity, as her purse was recently stolen and the letter made her believe that there's still a lot of good people out there. Flores told reporters that the letter has made an impact on her, her business, and her family, adding that she hopes a woman will come forward so she can return the money.